Hi. Uh, I thought we'd uh, pop this thing from Brussels over to Luton on a return flight from an early recording. Um, this is fly by wire through 20. Uh, fairly easy to use, in my opinion. Um, so uh, we'll get on with it. Brussels clearance delivery having 181 IFR to Luton ready to copy. Brussels clearance delivery having 181 Just IFR to Luton ready to copy. Brussels clearance delivery having 181 IFR to Luton ready to copy. Hopefully this thing will behave. So let's shove in those numbers to so 14,000. One day we'll get the right number. Uh, two five right. I'll just uh, change that for a minute. Two five right, and insert that. Boom. Uh, right. OF is set correctly. Yeah, set up all the rest of the lights. So I think so down here. Just set them to max because that's the easiest thing to do. And then down here. There is another one. Brings the whole thing to life. Well, set up the loading next. BBR GGW. Uh, it looks alright over in Luton. Pretty stable. Pretty uh, nice. okay ish autumn evening, as it should be. Um, we can connect to the jab bridge. Be a nice little add on. Not going to do anything else really. Um, for this block, it's only about two and a half, so we can. Probably get away with sh sh about six thousand pounds. That leaves a plentiful amount. That's max load. And then have this. So let's come back to FMC. Going to start clearing out some of these bits. can check the routing, I generally know it works, so we're not just going to fully do that. But when we do get to the end, just going to clear this out. Take us straight to Luton, and we can program in the, the approach when we actually get there. Ladies and gentlemen from the flight deck, on behalf of myself, your captain, the first officer and cabin crew, I'd like to take this time to welcome you aboard our flight. We're just wrapping up some paperwork up front here and waiting to see final numbers from the ground crew, then we'll be on our way. Flight attendants will be coming through the cabin shortly with a very important safety briefing. Right. We do ask that you give them your full undivided attention as they review the safety no. operations of this Airbus aircraft. We do appreciate your business having you aboard this flight. If there's anything we do to make your flight any more enjoyable, please don't hesitate to ask. Welcome aboard. So that's that done. Let's go to weightings. That's input. Yeah, just under two and a half. Confirm that. And numbers will come alive in a minute. There we go. So for this, just normal flaps one. I don't normally bother with any of the other rubbish in this FMC. Those look a little bit low, so they might need updating in a minute. That's okay. Well, cockpit brush motion is complete. What we can do now is let's fire up the APU. Flight attendants, arm doors, and cross-check. Jimmy just finds... Four, five, that can come alive. Jimmy just finds... Us, get the uh, fuel pumps and most of the stuff done nice and early and it'll be alright. Uh, we'll sort the push back out now. Once again, we'd like to welcome you on board. Your safety is our top priority. That's all done. Your attention while we demonstrate the safety features of this aircraft. 
So back to services. Let's disconnect that jet bridge. Goodbye, passenger Hoover. And let's get this enabled back on me, please. Cool tag. So we'll push back. Turn to our well, turn facing. So we're front facing to our left. From this to our right, I mean. And we'll get the taxi clearance from there. You would have probably closed the cockpit door, but I like listening to that um, lovely safety breathing each and every time, so there you go. That tug looks like it's now in place. We shouldn't need AP available, so yeah, shouldn't need our external power anymore. AP bleed, appropriate on. Seeking to ignition start just a minute, let's get this thing going rearward. I can make off. And then fire up engine 2. So you should be keeping an eye on sort of the engines as they warm up, making sure the numbers are green. Um, I don't really bother because it's an A320 and it does it fine every time. And this is a simulator. So. So there we go, lo and behold. Take off speed is too low, so let's just re correct this. It's probably a little bit more of an optimal way to do this to stop that happening, but. It's okay. Just preemptively, we can liven up the nav lights. It's a little bit early, but hey, hey. Don't want to put the taxi lights on yet because we'll probably blind that poor man down there. So it sounds like the click of engine 2 pretty much coming alive. There we go, available. Fire up engine 1. Let's get this nicely parked back here. Now we're clear of our little uh, ramp and its furniture. if I could once get this actually in alignment with the yellow yeah, taxi line but it's never really a successful thing so lovely that'll probably about do still looks like we're a little bit off to the left but that's okay so we're going to set a parking brake, detach that tug, turn that off, Brussels ground having 181 with Yankee and sort the rest of it all out. Taxiing hold short runway 25 right via taxiway India November 7 Oscar uniform Tango 7 Echo 6 Echo 5 cross runway 19 or Foxtrot 5 whiskey for whiskey for one whiskey for having off. 181. Now we can switch on those taxi lights. There we go, and just keep those off there. So anti is required, you don't need it today. E cams okay. Pitch yada 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 yada. Oh. Uh yeah. I think it's clear, beautiful. Back on.
Let's keep it in nav just for the moment. We'll tax this thing a little bit hard to uh, one way too far right just to get us there and off the ground in true easy jet spirit. So this fly-by-wire A320, absolutely beautiful to be honest, um, certainly compared to the default thing, um, I'll taxi a bit fast to be fair, certainly compared to the default thing it's, it's really, really good, level of detail is brilliant, uh, not to say it's foolproof but it's pretty good, start setting up the pre-takeoff items. Also, probably should do our checks. Somewhere down there, there we go. Uh, what have we got one? Ah, flaps. There we go. And we probably held the bacon a little bit too much while I was commuting there. We'll just taxi blind for a minute while I hit some buttons. There we go, done. So, uh, and the T cast, which is. I'll keep on TAO only uh, just because TAROA is um, certainly with the busy traffic around these heavy, around these bigger airports, um, you'll get it doing some silly stuff. And I'd rather that didn't happen. So, here we are not, because this is another one way. Uh, normally, ATC on the default thing will just tell you. Normally, far too late, but normally tells you if you're about to jump on the one way and cause an accident. They haven't, so. Um, here we go. One of the lovely things though about the uh, flyby well one, particularly in a little bit on the immersion side, is the um, is the sounds, particularly when taxing, just sound a little bit more realistic, a bit more heavy, a bit more realistic though, which is, is really nice to hear. It's just for a bit of background as well, I'm definitely not a pilot, I've just been into flight swimming for quite a while. Um, not, certainly as you can probably tell by me using the um, taxi chevrons, I don't really spend a huge deal of time getting into nitty gritty, particularly into the navigation um, and navigating airports, which I find particularly boring. But. Uh, Brussels Tower having 181 ready for IFR departure runway Here we are. right. Uh, so you've all found me taking shortcuts like. Uh, like not using airport charts. Uh, approach charts for different matter, but yeah, for airport charts, just navigating around the airports on the, on the 8 point. Uh, it's not something you'll find me doing regularly at all. So, lining up on 25 right as we should be. We haven't even checked the control surface, which was a bit of a bummer, but never mind. Um, 
let's just bake its teeny bits so lined up at the let's put in I suppose half most of the power just to check that they align and it's gay nice long runway at Brussels so we shouldn't have any trouble One thing I've noticed with the A320 is probably something I'm doing wrong, but the uh, takeoff in bit always pop, pop, always pops up. So it's very tight. Let's just get it this thing off the ground. Lovely positive rates. Gear up. Whack that AP on. Let's get that configured straight away. Start take off the ground spoilers. Get rid of the uh, tech valve, the taxi lights. We need to pop the Nice. Right. Yeah, straight back to stuff. So we go there. Oh, it is back to climb. Let's continue with the departure. So it's turned a bit evening misty, but that's okay. So it flaps up speed. Now we can see where we need to go. So it's just a quick hop this uh, flight. All 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 end to end takes about an hour. Pretty good otherwise. The only thing about this A320 is simply this one is um, speeds, altitudes. Everything is managed pretty much. So you can go really hands off with it uh, if you want to, which I. That's a bit of a simplistic simmer. Um, love. As we're approaching 10,000, we'll uh, flick it over to um, standard. I know that follows the American guidance, not necessarily correct local guidance. Uh, but uh, again, simplistic similar thing. We've definitely done all that. I love this uh, easy jet engine cup here. Reminds me of that sort of that 2000s special 220th anniversary or something, I don't know what it was. Livery, all in orange. Fly by wire, I think it is really, really quite loud, certainly when you get behind it. As it should be, it's, it makes a lot of noise. I'm 
once we get a little bit further on because it's quite a short top we can put in the uh, deets for uh, Luton Airport into the FMC for the approach just to get those out of the way nice and early. Specs and altitude upgrade in a minute. Climb and maintain flight level 260 having 182. So for this, uh, I've got some Thrustmaster pedals as well, so the setup and the way around. Thrustmaster pedals, there's um, Honeycomb, uh, Alpha and Bravo uh, being used. Uh, nothing particularly special about it, just makes flying with any aircraft really, really easy. I do have um, the old Logitech panels, but uh, I don't really like them and they sort of conflict with the Bravo a little bit in their role so um, I don't use them uh, to be honest. I do have them probably when for my GI, GA or anything like that so it makes sense it's not not something I use at the minute so this A320 is good enough for the, the Elf and the Bravo on its own and then everything you see in front of you as is Patrick sort of takes us nearly I forgot where there's this one so I mean that looks like Antwerp it might be Antwerp um, takes us certainly over north uh, north Belgium probably clips a bit of France never really know to be honest uh, somewhere around there um, and then takes us neatly over uh, Bit North Sea, bit of the Channel, uh, probably more North Sea, um, and then straight up towards London for a nice sightseeing tour, really. Uh, while we're up at this altitude, we can probably uh, let, let the passengers roam. Suffer a bit of stutter as they all jump up and down and carry on. I already see um, Luton coming into view on the 161 mile view. So we'll probably get these numbers in now because I'll be using my state. So 1021 10. And again, 
again transition or two just shove 10,000 in there to keep it give it a number to think about um, so 78 we can probably expect one way zero seven then as we're coming in uh, normally this end this then that involves doing an abbot right here but sort of passing over the top of uh, passing by Stone City coming down over Luton doing a U-turn and then back on one way I think 7 or 9 um, is into Luton nicely. Um, we shall see though. We shall see. Climb and maintain flight level three zero zero having one. Our final climb for the minute. Because up to the last altitude that we probably get up to and then come immediately down from. Just leaving the coast. Good, you see Great Britain just over in the distance. No smoking's illuminated. That's oh, probably because I've left it in auto. Oh, I've turned off no smoking, which now means I'm just going to launch that big barbecue in the back of the aircraft, as you'd probably expect of people. my time and doing these flights so um, that would probably help actually if anything but uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't bother with it just coming up to 30,000 feet just sit up here for probably about two minutes and then took the way down Jet spurt to get them get it all done within about a minute. I don't think they will be going down the whole length, but hey, hey. So we 
can see London straight ahead of us pretty much. Uh, so it's sort of the uh, south end. Down there as well. Shop, offshore wind farms, well, there's a couple down below us. So we were, but we just had uh, a lovely storm, Babbitt or something like that, and it was it's just gone over us. So uh, the UK is definitely a little bit more soggy. Hopefully, though, uh, I think I don't. I don't think there's any lingering sort of weather conditions that I need to be aware of. Descent and maintain flight level one eight zero, having one eight two. So start getting these uh, things plugged in. Let's get. London Center having one eight two is passing flight level three zero zero, descending flight level one eight zero. Passengers back in their seats. So, so this opportunity generally you like to shove in the auto bait just nice and early. Something less to remember later on. Right, this is a dot close on the range. <coughs> just down to our left, indeed, is Kent. Headbutted by a departure in flight. See anyone around us? Just check the TK such she's in the right mode. Yeah, I should have picked it up if it was nearby. Yeah, there you go. Pardon me. So we'll just continue on down this nice, pretty smooth descent, an easy one, all the way there. I think we do. We will just nail it a little bit towards Luton before probably deviating off onto the relevant approach pattern.
I'm just coming over to find uh, final plus mark of Copal. Uh, still got a little bit of descending to do, though. We've got two minutes worth before we actually uh, get to our 18,000. Probably a time that we have the. this on standby. Double check of the uh, the weather. Still the same. Classic Britain, which is good. Been and gone. 80,000 coming up and looting ahead. Let's just double check HC hasn't uh, tried to do anything. No, not yet. Last out two chains before one of the final ones. Uh, would expect. So yeah, any minute now, we shall receive the uh, approach. I won't. Don't normally program it in until we get there, just because um, the simulator has a habit of changing it for some silly options now and again I just normally keep it in line with wind directions you'd expect so you can never really I never really plan this stuff out until you uh, get there um, unless it's a specific airport with a specific approach you know about so I think that might be South End Pier down there Assume that's what it is. Or descend and maintain 8,000 feet. Expect ILS runway 25 approach via Abbott transition. Clear to Abbott having 1A2. So you can whack that in. That's sorted. So it's a straight approach. Pop that down to 8,000 now as well. So yes. Yeah, Let's use a little bit of speed brakes just to get this down. As you may have noticed, we have begun our initial descent down to our destination. Now would be a good time to wrap up any business you need to take care of as we prepare for our approach. If you are up, once you return to your seat, we ask that you remain seated until the aircraft arrives safely at the gate. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for a ride. This particular approach, you have to time things a little bit promptly as well to uh, make sure you just meet the gateways for the, uh, for the altitude otherwise you might have shoot the one. Oh wow. It's just requires a little bit more activity compared to some of the other approaches but other than that it's fairly bog standard.
this A320 floats very nicely as well so what you're often find of doing is cutting it really fine in terms of descent if you don't use a little bit of brakes Professional knowledge. So it's quite a steep descent down. Whack those on and get ourselves down a little bit quicker. Yeah, if you just say obviously only coming out so flight two tenths was quite nice. Rather than the full way like some of the Boeings. Just hit our descent speed as well. We can make this back over to local. Update it using the B key, the lazy key. And uh, what we can do as well, double check. I'll just go for a pretty standard uh, 500 radio for that. It does change dramatically before land, so we have to keep an eye on it. But it should be right. I can just review, we can just review the numbers. Uh, and there we go. So we should be able to get rid of those now, so we should be able to get rid of the 2000 foot in a medium of time. Approach checklist we can now actually complete because everything is set up correct as it should be. Landing lights on. This is nav mode to keep a little bit of a ring. So we can keep the whole picture as we should. Pass that, but we probably expect to put your prompts drop down to 6,000 foot. Before we get to BKY, So we do stick the um, cloud slope. Descent and maintain six thousand feet, havoc one eight two. No, pop that in. Obviously, it will just hold us at eight thousand now because it's the limitation we've already preset on it. So that's okay. Just as we pass our bit, that will drop down. Oh, I mean, it probably somewhere between BKY, BKY, BKY 12 and BKY itself, we will start dropping the flaps. So when we do the final turn, we're all set up and ready to do our final bits.
So just off the left we can see Stansted. So before BKY we will drop down to 3000. So what we'll probably do now is um, just activate, drop the 3000 feet, it will all happen reasonably quickly. feature of uh, MSFS to uh, pop us into the wrong approach group but hey hey probably chuck us into the right one in a minute so that's okay let's see we've captured the loot in ILS or captured is the wrong word but uh, just catch a glimpse of it basically on our display that's why I like to burn some of The uh, speed, nice speed now, it's too nice and early for this approach because we're still probably a little bit high for the, for the optimal. Speedbacks, hopefully for last time. Just while we plummet it down to three thousand, and we'll get those flaps two out so we can slow the plane down even more. Let's get those flaps two out. We can shove these straight up into there. Ground support is armed. Probably get these uh, passenger helpers back into the seat. So now flaps two figure nicely for the approach on our final route. 
I'll just see Stevenage ahead of us. That's really what we're crossing then. Luton just behind. The town of Luton, anyway, just behind uh, Luton Airport that we can see ahead. 2,500. Most of a moon, which is quite nice, provides a little bit of lighting. Let's see what we're doing, theoretically. Nice clear approach as well, which is really, really good. So we'll just wait till we're established on the glide slope. We'll just arm that now as well. Catch localizer. One last thing I think we can probably expect from this though is no, just a couple of last minute altitude change, which is good. Clearance there. Just got to be cautious because that looks like a plane that's going to probably be competing with the stop on the top left. 2,500. No, thankfully not. No, thankfully. So just hit the glide slope. A bit optimal time just to whack our gear down. Three green, go flaps three now. See hitching off to our right as well. Clear to land runway two five having one eight two. Last test this do which will lead for a couple more minutes. A couple more moments. Let's work ourselves down into flaps four. So we can figure to land. Obviously not that off the to-do list. So plan is probably about 500 foot. Uh, pop the sails into manual and manually land it. about this compared to some of the other sort of default planes is the uh, autopilot so the, and its approach mode is a lot lot more stable than anything else. I love a lot more stable. So we're just coming out to that find the foot marker. See the one was clear. Hundred above.
500. So we'll gratefully continue the approach, not the odd pilot off. Keep it on its nice trajectory down. I'll try to at least. I certainly know my landing technique is not brilliant. Hopefully, this Airbus generally looks after you. 300. 200. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. Just a teeny bit of flare that we need. Five. Landings probably aren't the best thing in the world by any means. Didn't kill us though, so that's a positive to take away from that. That's below 80 knots, so we can get rid of all that. And then uh, give ourselves a bit of manual braking and get, try and get ourselves off at this next. Still turning. Welcome to Luton. Time is probably about 8 o'clock somewhere along those lines. Tune is ground, get a substitute gate. Ground, Havoc 182, request taxi to the gate. Taxiing to gate 60 using taxiway Hotel Bravo, Havoc 182. I'm not going to remember where taxi 60 is because clearly I don't have. Taxiway ribbon. Have oh, those back off. Uh, clear there and track those back away so we're not going to use them again. So 60, I think, is around the back to the left here somewhere, so we'll go uh, nosing around for that. Be a lovely little blue marker to guide us in, but we're never, we're never really sure. Oh, we're going to switch off all the other non essential stuff now, so uh, set the transponder to uh, back to standby. Predicted wind shear. Oh, don't want to turn the radar off, but we do want to turn all these silly little option extras off. That completes the after landing checklist. Pull round to our gate. Other thing about Luton is they uh, sort of number clockwise, sort of, not completely. So uh, just have to put all round in one not one direction or the other, and you'll find it. There's no planes to see, which probably tells you that uh, somewhere, something along the line, something's gone wrong with uh, the uh, traffic at this airport. But hey, hey. So that there was gate 60, so what we'll just do is um, cheeky bit of reverse just to make sure we don't clip the grass and then uh, pop ourselves in and uh, this is where I find the rudder doesn't work properly. So you can see the rudder's still live there, which is a little bit annoying, but 
Okay, now we, now we actually have a little bit of input. That's interesting, that one. Probably edit that out uh, in a minute. Oh. Where's my man with his red flashing things? Let's not run him over. I have to go into it. Pikes were a little bit difficult to use when you've got the button. Lovely. Thank you, man. I can make on. Those lights off. Like those off. And um, we can have some external power, please. That's the end of the fight. Thank you very much for joining. I uh, hope you'll get some more done. Ta-ra.